Hi, and welcome to Talk of the Town. This is your on-campus source for entertainment news. It absolutely is, and Christine, this is our last show for 2009. Absolutely, our holiday episode, and we've got a lot of fun segments for you coming up. Yes, we do, and we've got some treats for In the Kitchen with Alex. Alex Carmesee, yes, and our Girls in Tipsy Trivia are downtown figuring out what everybody's doing for New Year's this year. Mm -hmm. But first, let's head over to Jenny Knight with a look at where you can get some studying done for your final exams on campus. Hey everyone, it's Jenny with Campus Spotlight. It's December and that means Christmas is just around the corner. But before we can enjoy the holidays, we have to face exams. The Thomas Cooper Library gets pretty busy around exam time, so we're checking out a few other study spots around campus. I'm here at the Colloquium, and I bet you've eaten lunch here. But have you thought about studying here as well? If you're crunched for time and need to eat and study at the same time, the Colloquium may be the place for you. Studying isn't encouraged downstairs, but if you come upstairs, there are plenty of tables for a group study and individual study. The colloquium is only open on weekdays, but when Starbucks is right downstairs, who can resist? Located at the Sumter Street end of the Horseshoe, the South Carolina Library is a little-known treasure at USC. Let's take a look. This library offers one of the quietest places on campus to study. Students are asked not to eat or drink in the library, and you must use a pencil when you're working with any of the books or archives. South Carolina is open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5, and Saturday, 9 to 1. Next, we have Jasmine's down in the basement of the Business Administration Building. It offers a great environment with plenty of tables to study at and plenty of soda machines as well as snack machines to keep you fueled for all of your studying. Jasmine's is open all night for those never-ending study sessions. During the day, the cafe is open in addition to the wide variety of vending machines. Happy studying and see you in 2010. Well, thanks, Jenny. And you know, there are a lot of great places on campus where you can get some quality studying done. And speaking of which, our Man on the Street team went out and asked students what their hardest exam is going to be this semester. Take a look. What's up, USC? It's Brandon Foster along with Quentin Boger and Jenny Knight. What are we going to be talking about today, Jenny? We are going to be asking everyone which exam they're studying for the most. My exercise science 224 exam because it's cumulative and it's, oh, say, like 15 chapters. My music air one. It's going to be hard. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and what's yours, Charisma? Mine is my chemistry 102 exam because it's very, very as well. Mills, what test are you studying for the most? I'm studying for my computer science exam on Tuesday. Biology 302 and 303. Wow, I hated biology in high school. <laughs> I'm Spanish 375 and 317. And I hated Spanish too. <laughs> I'm actually worried about my history exam. It's just, it's just going to be a, a pain just writing all those essays. All right. Well, it's a toss up between quantum mechanics and history 101. I'm really not sure which one's going to be harder for me. The Q word you just said, I don't, yeah. <laughs> Probably Econ 322 Intermediate Macroeconomic Theory. Um, chemistry 103, because I really need to pass it so I can pass the class. I'm stressed about Philosophy 110, because it's a really hard class and I need an A. And Daniel, which exam are you studying for the most? My public policy exam. I'm stressed about my math exam. It's crucial part of my grade, I think it's like 30%, and it's a class I've been struggling with. And it, as you know, most exams are cumulative. Logic. One Geology 335. It's going to be exercise science 530. I have, to, I have to pull off a high grade on that final exam. So. Uh, it's not so much an exam. It's, uh, it's more a day out of next week. Uh, Monday, I have traffic court at 930. You guys like do well in your exams. We know you will. And like I said, thanks for watching. No matter which one you're studying for, we're wishing you the best of luck from SGTV. Well, now that you know what's going on on campus, we're going to take a look at what's going on in the celebrity world with Cassie in The Spill. Thank you, ladies. It is Cassie here with your weekly spill. I'm here at the lovely Rockefeller Tree in New York. Someone who's not in New York, or at least I don't know, and I hopefully I don't run into him, is Marilyn Manson, who got back together with Evan Rachel Wood. Pamela Anderson wants to sing. <laughs> she can't sing, so her and a stylist are recording a song where all she says is hi over and over again because she do not want to sing too much because she can't sing. But she wanted to record a song. 
Hulk Hogan had just got engaged again to his girlfriend, Jennifer What's-Her-Face, who looks like his daughter. Looks like Brooke Hogan. Ain't that just creepy? Anyway, that was the spell for now. I will see you guys in a bit, and I'll give it back to you ladies. Well, coming up next, we've got Alex Garmazee and Gamecocks in the kitchen, and he's cooking up a homemade holiday treat that you can make right from the comfort of your own dorm room. Coming up next. Welcome to Gamecocks in the Kitchen. I'm your host, Alex Garmazee. The holidays are back again, and that means it's cold outside and you've got exams coming up. So there's nothing like a little bit of comfort food to get you through these tough times. And today we're going to be making homemade chicken pot pie. First thing we want to do is throw three chicken breasts on the George Foreman, because you need about three cups of cooked chicken for the recipe. That should take about 12 minutes. And one thing that's really good about chicken pot pie around the holidays is you likely have some turkey left over from either Thanksgiving or maybe Christmas, and you can use leftover turkey instead of the chicken and save yourself some time. So while our chicken's cooking on the foreman, we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients to this pot on the stove. We're gonna turn it to about medium temperature. And first, we're gonna add one third of butter to this pot, one third cup of butter. We're gonna wanna let this melt down real nice. And now that our butter's melted, it's time to add our flour. We have one third cup of flour, just gonna dump that in there. And then we have one third cup of diced onions, and we're gonna dump that in. And then we have one half of a teaspoon of salt, and one quarter teaspoon of pepper. And we wanna, again, stir this up. We've got the stove on about medium temperature. We wanna let this come to a hot simmer. And then we're going to add our liquid ingredients. We've got our chicken broth, and here we have one and three-fourths cup. So we're going to go ahead and add that. One cup of milk. We're going to go ahead and add that. We're going to let this come to a boil. And just keep it stirring so the ingredients don't burn on the bottom. So while the ingredients on the stove are coming to a boil, we can go ahead and cut up our chicken that just came off the foreman. So our chicken's cut up. We have exactly three cups, and we're going to go ahead and pour that into our boiling liquid. Stir that around a little bit. And then we're going to put in 10 ounces of frozen vegetables. You want to stir all this together. And let this go for a few minutes. And we're just going to put this on a low heat. The pie crust is really easy. There's no need to make a pie crust when Pillsbury already has the perfect size. You can buy one of these boxes and it has two of these rolls in it. One for the bottom and one for the top. So you just take one of the rolls and this is a nine by nine dish. Another little trick you can do is you can pinch off some of the extra on the sides and add it to the corners where you really need it. And once our pie crust is ready to go, it's time for the magic moment. We're going to pour all this into our crust. Looking good. We're going to place it on top. So now we're just going to make sure that these corners are nice and stable so that it doesn't fall apart when we're serving it. Then we're just going to take a fork and puncture the surface a little bit, let out some steam. Then we're gonna go ahead and pop this in the oven at 425 degrees for 35 minutes. And one great thing to do when you're waiting is to clean up because it's not any fun to clean up after you're done eating. So our chicken pot pie is fresh out of the oven, it smells delicious, and another great thing about chicken pot pie this time of year is it's good for at least two or three meals, and that's key during exam week. And I do have one more surprise for you, it's a little bit of sugar cookie dough and some red and green sprinkles. From my Gamecock kitchen to yours, happy holidays from Talk of the Town.
Well, it's our holiday episode of Talk of the Town, and the holidays wouldn't be complete without celebrating New Year's Eve. And the Tipsy Trivia Girls are doing just that downtown in Five Points. Coming up next. Wait, what show is this? Tip Tipsy Trivia. Hey guys, welcome to Tipsy Trivia. This week's theme is Holiday Hoopla. Tipsy trip, tipsy trip, tipsy all the way. Oh, what fun it is to see what drunk people will say. Hey, take a shot, drink a lot, come and play our game. But if you miss a few, then you're really lame. Woo! Yeah! Who's ready to play tipsy trip? This is our most excited group yet. I love tipsy trivia. Yeah, all right. Question number one. What did Mariah Carey want for Christmas? Yeah! 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 Oh my god! Yeah! 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 Where do the Who's live? The Who's live in Whoville, which is a democratic society based on the principles of Whovillism, which is a bullshit society, by the way, based on principles of inequality propelled by who is him? All right, I'm cutting you off. Now, did Rudolph's friend, the elf, want to be in the animated movie yes, yes. Rudolph the Red, Red yes, Nose yes. Red? Right. Yes. Yes. According to the song, Frosty the Snowman, what kind of soul does Frosty have? A very happy one. No. No, 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 One tipsy trivia. <laughs> now you know what you have to do now. You must sing. Here comes tipsy trip. Here comes tipsy trip. Right down five point five. We are the winners because we all sing with our tipsy rolls. Bells are ringing, drunk kids singing, all the merry and bright. In the movie The Santa Claus with Tim Allen, what was his character's real name? No idea. Um, what? What is the question? What was no Tim idea. Allen's character's real name? Santa Claus. No, his real name. No Tim idea. Allen. No, no his idea. character's real name. Yeah, George. Right. No. How many days is Hanukkah celebrated? Seven. False. Eight. <laughs> oh, he gets against two. He said eight. I'm sorry. Eight days. <laughs> eight crazy nights. Eight. What three things do not look <laughs> did the wise men bring to baby Jesus? <laughs> the three things he brought to baby Jesus? Yeah. Um, bourbon, tequila, and <laughs> No. <laughs> Santa Claus. Oh, Tim Allen. Tim what Allen. was his, no, What was Tim no, Allen's no, real no, character's no. name? He was, uh, he was Santa Claus. Who no. is John Madden? Real name. <laughs> who, who is, is John, John Madden? Madden? That's my final answer. No. Who is John Madden? John Madden. That's my final answer. No, no, just watch this one. John Madden. Final answer. John Madden. John Madden. It's wrong. Welcome back, and it is this Christmas season, so I'm going to give you guys the celebrity naughty or nice list. Starting off on the nice list, Chelsea Clinton is getting engaged. Good for her, and hopefully she won't be in the news like her parents were. 
Oprah for 25 years of service to the media and entertainment industry, aka giving cars away to people and practically schools. Katie Holmes and Nigel Lithgow, Karen Anaba, and Adam Shakeman for starting the Dizzy Feet Foundation. So you think you can dance, people, watch it. Anywho, we're going to send it over to Sammy for the naughty list. And his naughty list is Cash Warren, who made out with Lindsay Lohan, and reporters say that it was raw. Yeah, whatever that means. I don't know. So anyway, Tiger Woods and his reported sluts. Yeah, especially Rachel Uber slut. I don't know what's up with that. That's disgusting. His wife is gorgeous. And Chris Brown says he doesn't have an anger problem. Sorry, Chris Brown, but Santa doesn't like liars. You're getting some cold. Um, Robin Polanski, who in 1977 got charged for child molestation, he is a disgusting freak. He's a pedophile and what? He raped a girl. Get over it. Shit. Back to you. I obviously have work to do. Thank you, Sammy, for the naughty list. Get back to work. I know you need the money. Um, so anywho, I want to wish everybody happy holidays, whatever you celebrate, wherever you do it. Um, be safe, travel home, and I will see you guys next semester for more Spill. Back to you, ladies. In our final show of 2009, Alex Carroll is going to show us a little bit of what fun Christmas can bring in our most beloved segment, I Love the Internet. I'm Alex Carroll, and I love the Internet. On your mark, get set. We're riding on the internet. Cyberspace set free. Hello, virtual reality. Interactive appetite. Searching for a website. A window to the world. Got to get online. Take a spin. Now you're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. Our first video, it's the Channing Show. Now Channing is so annoying that even her own cat won't talk to her. Hi everyone, and this is... The Channing Show, and I am interviewing my cat, Ozzy. Now it's not the time to eat. Wait, I'm doing an interview here. No, you shut up. Thankfully, her cat was able to get revenge by learning how to unscrew hinges. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be in front of the closet, okay, and then <laughs> Next up, we see celebrity chef Paula Dean hit by a ham, y'all. Oh, I didn't know it was being thrown. Oh, my God. Thankfully, the ham was saved and was taken to Paula's house, drenched in butter and deep fried. Now, nothing gets me in the true spirit of Christmas more than seeing children being disappointed. What do I got? A black one or a white one? Please be a white. Red! Red! You got the crimson. Thank you, guys. More than the white, I got the crimson, the special edition. Oh, come on! There was no DS, Nick. There were just socks. What's in there? What's in there? Well, what do you think's in there? What is in My dollhouse. Can I open it now? Can you open it now? Yes. Oh. No. It's a suitcase. No. <laughs> That's it for this edition of I Love the Internet. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to send gifts to all my Facebook friends. I just want you for my own. Well, thanks, Alex. You can always count on you for a great laugh. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching our holiday episode of Talk of the Town, and thanks for watching all year long. We've really enjoyed having you as an audience. Absolutely. And next year, 2010, we're going to be back for a brand new semester of Talk of the Town. Yep, we'll be bringing you all the events going on on campus. All right. Thanks, everybody, and have a great break. <laughs>